Welcome and thank you for tuning in and joining us today um, for Schools Out, A Working Parents Guide to Summer, our virtual Learn and Learn. My name is Joy Bivens. I am the Deputy County Administrator of Health and Human Services for Franklin County, and I am excited to be moderating today's conversation on behalf of Franklin, the Franklin County Commissioners, Commissioner Kevin Boyce, Commissioner John O'Grady, and Commissioner Don Tyler Lee. Our Franklin County Commissioners fund enriching summer options K through 12 each year and have committed over 4. Point, I'm sorry, $7.4 million this summer alone. Today, we want to provide you with an overview of all the different summer programs in Franklin County and our network of community partners and what they're providing from day camps for elementary and middle schoolers to paid summer work experience opportunities to credit recovery with college and career counseling for high schoolers. We'll be speaking directly with some of our program providers and even youth who participate in our summer programs. It's always important to hear from our young people, particularly on their experiences and what they're doing for the summer and how they feel about summer programs. We'll also try to answer as many questions as possible from our viewers on Facebook. So if you have any questions, please make sure to send them in the chat. To kick things off today, we'll have Marilyn McPhee and Kristen Geiger from St. Stephen's Community House, which is one of our summer day camp providers. Then we'll have Ellen Moss of Godman Gill, a provider for our Ready to Earn summer program, as well as Thomas Phillips, one of our young men who participate in Ready to Earn. And we'll wrap the conversation up with Marion Meadows and Anna Bassett from I Know I Can, Principal Paul Smathers of Groveport Madison High School. I still want to say he is at Whitehall. I claim him at Whitehall. And Westland High School student to talk a bit about our new summer jobs and more our summer jam initiative. Thank you all for participating in our conversation today so our community members can learn more about the opportunities for their young people and for their families. I'd first like to share with you a bit of information about our summer program, then let's move right into some conversation. Did you know the Franklin County Commissioners authorized over 2.3 million for community providers to serve over 1,600 TANF eligible youth ages five to 13 at sites all across Franklin County? The Franklin County serves the needs of our county's working families and supports elementary and middle school students as they prepare for a bright and productive future. This summer, Franklin County continues to fund quality summer camps that offer a free, safe, and fun day long summer camps that operate Monday through Friday for six hours a day. That is such a huge benefit to, to many working families. The camps provide our youth with an array of services such as academic instruction, social emotional learning, STEAM projects, trauma informed care services for youth to express how the pandemic has impacted them. To dive right into some of our questions, I'm going to ask for our summer camp panel, Miss Marilyn and Miss Kristen, as well as um, one of our parents and her son, Miss Ashley and Mark Ellen, to, uh, um, to, to guide and, and, and have some conversation with me regarding some of the opportunities that will be offered at St. Stephen's. Mm -hmm. So welcome everyone from St. I'm going to call you all Team St. Stephen's. Is that okay? That's perfect. Okay. Yeah. Team St. Stephen's. So Marilyn and Kristen, I'm going to ask you the questions first. Are you ready? We're ready. ready. Okay, it'd be a really easy question. <laughs> what is today's date? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. What sort of activities do you all offer at um, St. Stephen's during the summer camp? So our um, program activities are STEAM focused. So we do lots of different things that have uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. And then this summer we're adding drama to the component as well. So we do bi-weekly themes. So every two weeks we do a different um, activity. Um, so those themes that we're gonna have this summer are space, sports, chemical reactions. And then, like I said, drama will be that fourth one. Um, our newest component this summer is going to be podcasting. So we're gonna have our youth split up into different groups and learn about the productions of a podcast um, and how to put those together. Um, we do lots of social emotional activities as well. Um, we partner with St. Vincent Family Centers to offer some um, alcohol and other drug prevention activities. We have a Go IT computer programming 
um, component for our older students. Um, so those fifth through eighth grade students. Um, we also have a partnership with Art in the House. So we do bring some artistic expression activities to our students. And then another new component this summer is going to be urban lacrosse. So we'll have some of our, our students that are doing some different uh, lacrosse activities and learning something new. You all have such a diverse offering for your young people. Now, are they different from child to child or student to student? Um, so we keep our, our themes pretty consistent, but we do modify them so that they are age appropriate, grade appropriate, uh, making sure that they're getting the most out of camp. Um, and then some of those that are a little more complex, like the computer programming, we focus that on the older students um, so that they're able to really understand and, and create those different activities. So, you know, my children, when they were younger, of course, they're not, they're college age and college graduate, but one of the most important things, particularly for my son, was what are we eating? So what type of meals <laughs> do you all provide? <laughs> so we offer both breakfast and lunch, both provided by Columbus Recreation and Park Department. So that has been a really wonderful partnership. So we can provide food to the kids both in the afternoon and in the morning when they get here. I should have learned this over a year and a half ago. Can siblings be placed together in your program? So we do our best to keep siblings together when they are close in age. Um, okay. But obviously having a, a six-year-old and a 12-year-old in the same class is going to be more difficult when those activities do vary based on age and grade. Um, so we do our best to keep them together, but it is a challenge when there's an age gap. So, so you know, as we're still coming out of this pandemic, um, I know the world is opening it up. Like my kids would say, you know, we're outside, right? So as we're outside, um, what precautions are you all taking since we're still living with some of the restrictions of the pandemic? So during the summer of 2020, um, we did an on-site camp as well, and we modified all of our safety precautions in accordance with the CDC. So we're going to continue those precautions going into summer of 2021. So parents drop off and pick up at one door. Kids come in, they wash their hands. We, um, when arriving, we take their temp. Mm -hmm. The kids are wearing masks. We socially distance. And then we also have plastic barriers on the tables oh, good. by one of our community partners right here in Linden, Plascolite. Good, good, so that's good. Been really beneficial. Good. You know, as we've gone through this pandemic, you know, for some students, this could have, this was very emotional and sometimes traumatic in, in instance because they've been separated and, you know, maybe experience some anxiety because of uncertainty. How do you allow them to express those feelings? And is there an outlet for that in your program? Absolutely, yeah. We have seen how challenging this pandemic has been for our children, um, particularly socially. You know, they're not able to see their friends. So uh, when we did implement our Learning Extension Center, we were able to see some of those students that came in and they were so excited to see their friends. Um, and so they were here on their Zoom calls, but still in the same room with other children. So that was a great benefit to them. Um, so this summer, the outlets that we're going to have for them to express themselves um, are going to be the artistic expression, the art in the house activities. Uh, we have a partnership with Future Ready Columbus in which we do our pre and post DESA assessments. And from those tests, we can actually see where a child may be struggling in an area and we can modify our activities based on age again uh, to ensure that we're meeting the needs of each child. So um, that's been super, super beneficial. We have a continued partnership also with Nationwide Children's uh, Behavioral Health. So they actually send clinicians to us that will sit in the classroom and do observations um, and help us to identify some students that may be struggling in an area or maybe benefit from extra supported services. Um, we also have a great, with that partnership, a great resource to get them connected um, to possible resources and, and uh, actual counseling sessions if necessary. Awesome, awesome. Is there anything else you all wanna share about your program right now before I, or how about this? How about you think about that question? Okay. And I'm gonna get uh, to the star of your panel, the star sure. of your panel, Mr. Mark Allen and um, Ms. Ashley. Mm -hmm. How are you? Do I hear a little one in the background? Yes, you do. I have oh. a nine month old, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine, you are fine. You're fine. The way that the St. Stephen's program is set up, it sounds like they got something even for the babies over there. If they kept, we kept letting them go. Um, so let me ask you this, um, Ashley, what in your son, you know, Mark Ellen, what excites you most about attending summer camp? Mark Ellen? Mark Ellen? Oh. 
playing sports and seeing other kids for the first time in like a year. Wow. So what sports do you play? Basketball. You play basketball? Are you pretty sweet in basketball? Are you like the <laughs> Steph Curry or are you like the LeBron James of basketball? I don't know. Oh, you don't know. Okay. Okay. You'll, find, <laughs> you'll figure it out later on. I think he's um, getting there. He's getting there. Okay. Yes. Okay. Can you um, share with us, Ashley, just really quick, um, in your words and how much you feel comfortable, how has the pandemic um, impacted you and your family? It's impacted, I feel like everyone a lot, but mostly my family because, you know, we were stuck in a house for almost a year, it seems like. Um, and being in a house, I was pregnant at the time and two boys, you know, it was really hard for them. They didn't have a chance to get out and do anything fun. So I think last year they got a chance to go to the summer program just for a little bit, but, it, and then it was kind of like on and off. It was a lot going on, right. but you know, it was really, really hard for them being stuck in a house for a year. So I think they're really excited to go back to the summer program this year because they love St. Stephen so much. And Mark has been here for, I think, about three years now. This is going to be his third year. I'm sorry, fourth year. Six. Four years. Six. Can about four or five years now with the summer program. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's really excited to come back this year. So we're looking forward to that. As a, as a parent and you're thinking about summer, um, what are some of, if you were to give any advice for parents who may not attend the, the St. Stephen summer camp, right? Mm -hmm. What would you tell them, you know, to look for in their summer camp? One thing I think that's a very important for me is safe. They're, they're safe when they come here. This is a very safe environment. I don't really have to worry about, you know, um, is anything happening to my kids? Is anyone that's in this building that shouldn't be in the building? When I drop my kids off here at this program, I know they're safe. They, their doors are majority locked, you know, one way in and usually one way out. And, and then they have a fun time. And that's really important to them is, is that they're having fun and learning and they're getting to meet new children every summer. So I think um, if more people would to know about this program, they would really enjoy this program because like I said, it's very safe and the kids have a really good time. So as a parent, you would be okay saying, you know, it's for those parents who are kind of, you know, I really don't want to take my kids out, you know, I want to keep my kids still in the house because I'm unsure about the pandemic. You would say, find a safe environment and pretty much, you know, trust it and allow your kids to have an opportunity to meet with other children, to engage okay. with other. Okay. 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 Wonderful. 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 Thank you so much. And before I move to our next panel, I want to ask our um, team, St. Stephen's, what else would you like the community to know about your program? Um, oops. No, just that all of these um, summer day camps sponsored by Franklin County Department of Job and Family Services and the commissioners are really safe environments for the kids to learn, to grow, and to thrive. Um, so we thank all of you at Franklin County. Um, I think programs like this have a huge impact on mitigating the summer slide that many children face each summer, each summer. And especially now with kids being in and out of school all of last year, I think it's more important than ever that kids have an opportunity to learn and have fun and thrive. Thank you for that. And I know there is a question in the chat and I'm gonna just answer it by this. Um, you know, how do you get into summer camp? I'm gonna ask everyone to visit so that I'm gonna read it off of my phone so I do not mess up the, um, and if we can put it in the chat, that will be good as well. JFS, jfs.franklincountyohio.gov backslash summer. We have a list of all the summer camp, uh, different summer camp providers on that site, including the open slots, the contacts, and you can learn how to register. Um, Marilyn and, and Kristen, do you all have openings, right? Do you still have openings right now? We do, yeah. We've already started our enrollment process, but we have our applications um, available at the front desk as well. Awesome, so you can come in and grab an application or you can go online and, 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 and get in contact with the folks at St. Stephen's and other providers that are in Franklin County. Thank you, team St. Stephen's. Thank, Thank you, you, young sir. Thank you, Miss Ashley, for your time. Um, don't go anywhere because you may be going, you know, I may call you back up later because of course I am not following the script today. So 
Let's talk about ready to earn. Franklin County commissioners have committed over $1.4 million to support job readiness training and paid work experiences programs for TANF eligible high school age youth ages 14 to 18. Through our ready to earn program, we have integrated partnerships which brings together Franklin County Job and Family Services with, Godman, with the Godman Gill Association who is joining us today the Columbus Urban League and Tech Corp. Through our Ready to Earn Partners, the summer program offers a combination of project-based learning and traditional work opportunities, including Top Golf, Huntington Bank, Columbus Museum of Art, coding training with exposure to in-demand cybersecurity fields, and more. Participating youth will receive up to a $1,000 stipend with an opportunity to earn an additional $300 incentives. So with us today, I'm gonna say um, Team Godman Gill and our, um, our, our youth representative, Thomas Phillips. Um, hello, how are you both doing today? Good. I'm wonderful, good. thank you, how are good. you? Good, good, good. Trying to keep my head above the water as all of us. Yes. Um, we're we're going to dive right into it, um, particularly for you, Ms. Ellen. What sort of employability or work readiness training will Gott McGill be offering this summer? The Guild is uh, oper operating um, quite a few job readiness and uh, training opportunities for youth this summer. Mm -hmm. um, and to kind of pull everything into um, focus for these young people, they will be creating a career portfolio. Hmm. It'll be digital. It'll be given to them on a flash drive and they will be able to keep all of their certifications, their resume, their up-to-date resume, cover letter, all of their essays on this digital career portfolio. Um, they will be engaged in career exploration. There are lots of jobs in high growth, high demand uh, career clusters in central Ohio. And so we want to make sure that they get exposed to those. Um, they will participate in financial literacy training. Once they earn that money, they have to know what to do with it. Um, they will get an introduction to basic computers, uh, including Word, PowerPoint, and Adobe Spark. They will learn uh, interviewing skills and interviewing etiquette. Um, unfortunately, we've been conduct well. We've been conducting interviews for a lot of positions at the guild uh, recently, and we've had uh, people who have scheduled an interview and not shown up, not not even send an explanation as to why they're not there. And so we want these young people, if they're not going to show up for an interview, call and let people know that mm -hmm. um, in advance. And then uh, communication skills, resume writing is what cool. we'll be providing. Well, wonderful. So I'm gonna reinforce, if you do, um, if you're fortunate enough to obtain an interview with the God McGill, please make sure that you follow up in the uh, unfortunate chance that you're not able to make that interview so that they can fill those um, interviews. We have a lot of young people out there looking for summer um, youth opportunities. Um, is your program all virtual? Is it on site? Is it a blend of both? How does that work? Well, it, it's not a blend of both. It's primarily um, virtual. And there are opportunities to volunteer with um, organizations or companies that are going to provide that. Uh, and that would be in person, but it's going to be up to uh, the young people and, and their parents or guardians as to whether or not they're going to do that. Okay. Okay. And how long does your program run through? And, and it, can you reinforce how much the young people will earn? I, I can certainly do that. I know that that's one of the most important <laughs> things we'll talk about today. Um, the program runs for eight weeks. And I too am reading, I'm reading from notes here because staff have given me lots of wonderful um, information here, but the program runs for eight weeks. They're, um, they're able to receive up to $1,000 in stipends and up to $300 in incentives. 
And I say up to because it's very important that they complete their assignments on time in order to get the stipends, which are given weekly, paid bi-weekly at $150 a week. So in order to earn those weekly stipends, uh, young people need to complete their assignments on time and um, complete them uh, thoroughly. I'll say it that way. Um, and then with the, with the incentives, if they complete their first weeks, four weeks of work on time, they will receive the first $100 incentive. They complete the last four weeks on time. They'll get the remaining $200. But in order to get all $300, they have to do what they need to do in the first four weeks. Right. So this is project-based learning. This is this is unlike maybe you know a young person feeling like they go to a site and they do some work, you know whatever it is, maybe filing. But this is project-based learning, and they must complete the assignments. Correct. That is correct. Awesome. So you you literally earn while you learn. Absolutely. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Um, just really quick, how do students and parents learn more about um, getting registered? Well, let me preface this by saying, uh, Joy, that we have about 300 young people registered already. Wow. And we only have spots for 150. Wow. So I would not discourage folks from registering because we never know um, whether or not everybody is eligible. We don't know if everybody is going to show up, mm -hmm. um, but I do need to let young people and parents know that registering now may be a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what, um, what it looks like with the Urban League, but that is also an, a place to look um, to see whether or not they have spots. Okay, that is um, that's good information for us as community leaders to know as well. And if there are um, you know, other organizations out there that have slots, please reach into us. We want to make sure that we provide as many opportunities as possible. And Joy, um, if I could just say here that mm -hmm. I really commend Franklin County for everything that's being invested in, into our young people this summer. Um, and I would encourage the entire Columbus and Franklin County community, especially our, our business and um, political leaders, to think about how we can invest more into young people, especially during the summer for summer jobs. Absolutely, absolutely. And so you'll know, Ms. Ellen, we're having um, the, we're doing like a tour of Franklin County and meeting with all, even the municipalities and offering to incentivize their businesses and their chambers to hire meaning to to provide meaningful work experiences so that young people don't have barriers in transportation. I don't know where we're at in the status of that right now, but we're doing everything possible to ensure that every young person has an opportunity this summer. Let me know how I can su support that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Okay. Thomas, you're up next. So we're going to give you all the hard questions. Okay. It's that I'm going to give you a, a algebra equation. <laughs> just kidding what do you hope to get out of the ready to earn program is it improving your work skills is it the work experience what is it um it was when i found out i got a seal for high school because mm -hmm. i'm a sophomore well i'm going into my junior year and i'm doing welding for um i uh, yeah, I'm doing welding for Eastland, and I'm not very good at tests, and mm -hmm. to know that I can get a seal for, um, to help me pass high school, Right. because even though I might know everything on the test, I, once I get to the test, my mind goes blank, and I'm, and I'm not very good at it, so it's, the seal is going to help me, and, and in the world, you need even though you you need work experience. It doesn't matter how good you are at something. You might be more better someone than something. 
they might have more work experience. They're probably going to get that job. Yeah. You need and the experience, experience that you're learning, Thomas, is so, oh my God, it's so valuable, right? And just so yeah. you'll know, I, I identify with you in taking tests. So I am not a, uh, you know, you give me a book. There's some people who can just take a book and they read it and they can eat it and then they can take a test. I have to feel it, smell it, touch it you know, all of that before I understand the concept. Yes, a book, when I read a book, it goes it goes in one ear and out the other. I, I don't I don't comprehend when I read a book. Yeah. It, yeah, it's, I hate reading books for that reason. So it's, taking tests, you know, can be, you know, for me personally, you know, I, I understand, but I love the fact that this project-based learning and you obtaining that seal, because it puts you actually ahead and, and make you, you know, make it makes you more marketable in the work yes. world, right? Yes, so does. that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. So did you participate in the Gottman Gill program last year? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. What was that experience like? Um, it was good. I liked it. Um, I learned about coding. I have done coding through um, a Microsoft program at East End. East End. Um, when you go to the East, East End Mall, there's that Microsoft store. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in the back, um, I created a game. Um, so I've done that before, but that was like the only coding I've ever done. And I learned about customer customer service, which, and I know in every job, you kind of learn about that and you deal with that. But um, How I, awesome. yeah, it was, it was nice. I learned about coding. It was, it was kind of nice. That is really, really awesome. I'm going to ask you a question, Thomas, and in your own words, as much as you feel comfortable, can you share how has the pandemic impacted um, you personally um, this past year? Um, me? Not very much. Okay. Um, my family, we stay at home a lot. Oh, okay, okay. Like my entire family. Mm-hmm. But I know people that don't like my dad got COVID. Oh no! So um, I, I kind of got nervous about that. He has heart problems, and mm -hmm. I was nervous about that. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, um, I actually was with him when he had COVID, mm. but I was lucky enough to not get it. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I know it's impact, impacted a lot of young people. I think you're fortunate enough to have your family and you all being so tight knit and together. Um, I think that's phenomenal. Um, yeah. I'm going to ask you one more question, Thomas. And if you say, you know, if you if you, you can say whatever you want to say, but we're going to get in your pockets a little bit. What are you saving for? Um, I'm not very good with money. <laughs> oh no. But, um, <laughs> but I probably won't be saving the money. I have a truck, and um, I'll probably be spending on that because it's having some problems right now, but we're fixing those. My dad was a mechanic. Awesome. So um, we'll, we need to be fixing problems on it. And I just probably be spending that money on the truck. Awesome, awesome, awesome. When you're done and you are, a, I'm sorry, what year are you again? I'm sorry. I'm a sophomore right now, but I'll be going into my junior year. So when you walk off of the stage, you're gonna walk right into a career. Yes, I'm going into welding. Awesome. And there's, that is such high demand right now with all the construction. You see the cranes and stuff going up in across the county. So you're going to have so many offers. Um, I really appreciate you um, sharing with us today. And uh -huh. Miss Ellen, what do you want us to know about your program before I move on to the next panel? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that um, having the opportunity, have, young people ha having the opportunity to gain the skills mm -hmm. that they're going to need, not only now, but to build on those skills as they move into adulthood mm -hmm. is critical. And so it's, I, I really appreciate being able to do this. Um, every young person participating in our program will have a job coach. So they won't be doing this alone. They'll have somebody that can bounce things off of, to um, ask questions of, and so I think that, that parents can be um, confident in knowing that they won't just be alone at this um, adventure this summer. And then also young people that are participating this summer with us will have the opportunity 
to um, explore our team program that operates year round. Awesome. And we won't just kind of dump them at the end of the summer, but they would have the opportunity to continue during the school year. Awesome, awesome. Again, Thomas, thank you for sharing. I want you to have, and we as from, um, from Franklin County want you to have a, the best summer experience as possible. We love Godman Guild and all of our providers. And thank you, Ms. Ellen, for sharing with us today. I would ask you, please don't go anywhere. I know you have to take your screen down because I'm sure there are going to be lots of questions. But thank you so much for what you do for our young people in this community. And thank you, Thomas, for participating in um, what is being offered in Franklin County. It's our pleasure. And with, <laughs> and with that, finally, you will be excited to learn how local school districts are even participating in summer programming for our youth and their families. Our Franklin County commissioners have committed over $3.7 million to support the Summer Jam Initiative. This is a new integrated partnership with Franklin County, the City of Columbus, and the Workforce Development Board of Central Ohio, which will administer the program along with numerous local school districts and community providers. So this is a collaborative effort and this is what we love. This new Summer Credit Recovery Initiative is for high school juniors and seniors who are not on track to advance or graduate. I'm gonna repeat that. This new program is for high school juniors who are not on track to advance and high school seniors who are not on track to graduate high school. Summer Jam is a six week program that aligns with the ODE graduate, Ohio Department of Education. We always use terms, Marion. The Ohio Department of Education graduation requirements and includes college and career coaching. Young people receive a $200 a week will receive $200 a week for enrolling with opportunities to earn more for completing career readiness goals. Some of the school districts participating in the summer jam include Groveport Madison High School, who is joining us today, Principal Paul Smathers, um, Reynoldsburg City Schools, and Whitehall City Schools. So now you have a high level understanding of Franklin County summer programs for our youth. I'm going to ask the um, collective of the summer jam um, experience to um, come forward, open up your screen so that I can ask you all some questions um, that our viewers may be having. And I do want to make mention that we do know that Columbus is participating. However, they are not a part of this panel at this time. Um, so for our Summer Jam folks, um, how long, let me ask you this, um, for our Summer Jam folks, I know we have Marion Meadows from I know I can, and this is what I get for messing up all of Bart's notes. And a Bassett from I know I can, and Paul Smathers from um, Groveport um, City Schools, and Saray from Westland High School. So welcome panelists. And um, this is for um, Marion and um, Anna. Can you give us an overview of what typical day looks like for high school students participating in the summer jam? Absolutely. So. Within this program, students will go about earning their high school credits just as they would if they were participating in traditional summer school. So that looks very that looks different for each district. Some of that is done still virtually through an online platform. Some may be done in person through that program. But the great part that I think that is is that through Franklin County Jobs and Family Services and this support, students are able to minimize the pool of work and having to work and balance schoolwork and a job through this financial incentive and being able to focus strictly on their credit recovery. And for a high school senior that didn't graduate when they would have hoped to, the opportunity to make that up and to walk away with their diploma, for a junior to begin the senior year where they need to be, I just think it's fantastic and a great opportunity to take advantage of resources and services, not only from their district, but from the community partners, such as I know I can, I think will be great. Anna, do you want to add anything to that? I would just echo everything that Marion said, um, and I think just trying to help students as best we can. Um, and I think just allowing them an opportunity to kind of step back from trying to manage five things at once um, and just really focus on their credit recovery. So I'm gonna ask you both a very redundant question because I really wanna reinforce the message. 
what is the difference from participating in summer jam versus summer school? So the major difference, I think, is I don't want to be as blunt, but the money. You, you know, our hope is that students, if if you are behind, and and I, you know, I think we all understand what this last 14 months has been like, not only for us, but for families and for the students in particular. And many did not expect to be in this position, but the opportunity to overcome it. So for many students, they're gonna go through their summer school program and they're gonna complete it and be where they are. But for this group through this program, they're gonna do the same thing and walk away with some financial support for the future or to make it through this summer time period in a way that others will not. And I, and I really love the fact that you share that because, you know, um, again, like many of our providers before, you know, you're going to um, earn while you learn, which is a tr tremendous benefit because many times students gravitate towards the job so they can make that summer extra money, whether you're trying to save for a car, you're trying to prepare for the next year for whatever, you know, you're looking forward to. Um, can you tell us a bit about your staff, their qualifications and their background that are going to be working with the young people? Absolutely. So our staff comes from a variety of different educational backgrounds, all of whom have been with I Know I Can. We take special care through a, a number of specialized trainings as it relates to college success and career attainment. Many of our staff have backgrounds in admissions experience from colleges and universities from throughout the country. Um, we take part, as I said, in a number of programs and professional organizations that continue to uh, enhance our ability to support students and, and what they're doing. I think the other piece is, you know, for our staff, having lived a lot of these experiences to be able to talk through talk with students about what they need to be successful um, to set them up for things that may come so in addition to the credit recovery these college and career milestones of do you have a working resume that you can be working through have you applied for college have we completed the fafsa how do we remove all barriers that are going to keep you from the attainment that you're hoping for your future and I appreciate you sharing that. I'm gonna ask um, both, and Anna, you just jump in. Um, I'm gonna ask you both this question. Um, how are you equipping um, young people for college and career through your program? Yeah, um, I would be happy to talk about that. I think we kind of try and start at an early age just with students to have them think um, even their freshman and sophomore year when they're entering high school, okay, this is a milestone that's going to come what can we do to help you get prepared? So whether that's, let's practice sending an email practically, what does this look like? Let's see how you're doing at multitasking everything um, and just kind of making sure that everything is kind of in line for them their junior and senior years to then be taking ACTs, SATs, working on resumes, things like that. Um, so kind of coaching them along in high school to then really be equipped by their senior year. You know, I don't think we typically don't want to jump into everything senior year. I think we want to be able to give them tools that will then help encourage them in their senior year. That, that's awesome. It's funny. I got a, I received a, um, a text message from my son yesterday who started an internship and uh, Mr. Smathers will appreciate this as well as you, Marion. Um, he, I said, how was your first day? He said, I learned how to um, answer the phone properly interesting that he's a sophomore in college <laughs> he uses the phone every day <laughs> but teaching those types of skills and being ever being ready for adult work life is very important as well as you know um in career as well as college so we appreciate what you all are doing how long does your program run and what happens if a student misses a day so what happens if a student misses a day is based a lot on the district um, this program runs six weeks, um, but I think the great part is, and I, I think another benefit of this program versus traditional summer school is the follow-up. So knowing that through this program, you're going to have many community partners, not just I know I can, um, following up with students, trying to get keep them on track, trying to make sure they are hitting all the various milestones that are taking place. Um, our staff will be working throughout the summer, not only on this initiative, but helping students 
transition from high school graduation to college enrollment in August. Um, so overlapping some of those programs with this as well, but making sure that students are prepared for whatever August may bring. Um, and the opportunity for students who have not earned their diploma to walk away this summer with their diploma with a little extra money in their pocket for doing so, I think is a true benefit. Awesome, awesome. Um, what would you like for families to know about your program? Anything else you want our families to know um, about your program? I think the biggest thing is just to take advantage of this opportunity. Yeah. I think yeah. it's, it is a true statement to say, hey, this year was tough and I need the assistance to get back on track and I really want to. And I think there are a lot of caring, organizations and adults and community members that are looking forward to help as many students as possible. Um, so please take advantage of this opportunity and allow us to provide that help. We really appreciate you all from I Know I Can and all the work that you do and always thank you. Thank you so much for always stepping up and saying yes. And um, please uh, thank your leader, Katina, for me um, because many times she is available even after five o'clock and my, when I'm going to the grocery store and I have an idea, I'll send her a text message. So. Please thank you. Thank you to all your team and staff. Please do not go anywhere because we may have questions for you at the end. Um, and then coming to the stage next is Mr. Principal, Principal Smathers from Groveport. And one of our Westland High School students, um, Saray. And um, Principal Smathers, I'm going to start with you. Um, just being in the school district and working with young people, you are boots on the ground. You see it firsthand. Um, every day, and just from the perspective of the pandemic, you saw the impact of what ha what happened to students and families. What sort of challenges um, has your students and families experienced over the school year? Well, I think that's a great question, and it's a little hard for everybody to understand, but a lot of people have lived through it. We heard from uh, the young man, I think it's Mark Allen, and then the other young man from uh, uh, I think his name was Thomas. Yes. And then you heard from the mother of what these families have gone through being in the home and struggling and struggling to, to do school differently. We totally flipped the script on everybody on how we do school. Uh, unfortunately, not everybody thrived in that situation. We had a lot of families and students struggling. So our failure rate is off the charts. Our kids uh, have missed out on a lot of things that schools provide beyond just the classroom. For instance, breakfast and lunch. And uh, those are just a few things that we're really focused on with our summer program. This opportunity that you're presenting us are uh, helping our juniors and seniors catch up and, uh, and put a dent in our failure rate and provide credit recovery opportunities with the um, program and paying the kids is allowing them not to compete with summer work. And as you know, a lot of our students, especially 16 and above are working and they're supporting, they're helping support some the family. Um, with this, we are providing an opportunity to, for them to still make money and not compete with summer work. They could get work, uh, but the focus is going to be about the credit recovery. Okay. Um, the credit recovery is one thing, but, uh, you know, helping kids with a 2021 20, cohort uh, okay. graduate on time. Uh, the state of Ohio has extended the 2021 cohort to September 20th. So we're providing, uh, extending the school year so they can graduate on time and help kids catch up. The, our juniors uh, can start their school year with a 2022 co cohort and get back on track and have a high percentage of our kids graduate on time and not compete with uh, them needing to work and earn money over the summer. Awesome, awesome. And, and, and Saray, I'm going to, um, I want to ask you a question because I kind of want to go back and forth with you and um, Principal Smathers. Saray, you're from Westland High School, correct? Yes. Okay, okay. Um, how did you benefit from that, the I Know I Can program? They helped me so much because they guided me, helping me with the FAFSA and also with my scholarships. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what school did you apply to? What school are you, are you going to? Or what school I'm going to the Ohio State University. Congratulations to you. you. And you start in the fall? Yeah. And you're majoring in? Business. 
business. Good for you. Good for you. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so let me ask you this, um, Mr. Smathers. Um, how is your district partnering with the summer jam providers? Like, what does that um, partnership look like with your district? So the oh. summer jam providers, what is your just like, how was that partnership working? They, you all are, is there a curriculum or you like, what are you all doing? So we have our credit recover courses, which is yep. the graduate graduation required courses that the kids need according to the state of Ohio. We're also implementing a health and PE. A lot of our kids, especially if they want to apply to the career center or other pathways, they need to have that health and PE uh, on their transcript, uh, as well as art. We're doing college and credit, excuse me, college and career readiness and a career uh, counseling programs. Uh, we'll have SEL um, groups that our social workers will be working with. And uh, we're having a tremendous focus of reconnecting with our kids. We have a tremendous amount of students, actually at the high school, it's one third of our students were CDA. Wow. We have a tremendous amount of kids that haven't even stepped foot in this school for over a year. And we have to reconnect with them. We have to build that connection and those relationships back with the school. So we're doing a lot of activities that summer camp would do, but we're gonna awesome. do that here and start building those connections and building those relationships back and building that sense of welcome and sense of belonging back in school. We also will provide breakfast and lunch and transportation for all of our kids. That is awesome. I want to make mention they're going to provide breakfast and lunch and transportation. So there's there's no barrier here for your young people. And, you know, I think it was easy. And, I'm not, and, I, and I use that term loosely. But when the world shut down, right, everyone just disengaged. We all went into our, you know, you and your corner, I went in my corner. Yeah. And, you know, everyone just kind of disengaged. And I really commend you all for you know, being tenacious and going after students to re-engage them. Um, yeah. So thank you for, for doing that. Yeah, um, did you hear Mark Allen's mom kind of <laughs> she stressed how hard it's been on her? And mm -hmm. that's never lost our mind. And mm -hmm. that's the stuff that breaks our heart. But we got to reach back out to our families and our parents and we're here for them. And uh, Marion, I love the, the note behind Marion. It says, dream big work hard will help. I love that. And that's kind of what we've been doing. We've been trying to help reconnect with the families, reconnect with the students and do whatever we can extend the school year. And thank goodness for Franklin County. I'm so glad we work in Franklin County and the things that you're offering to provide our families and our students to help them catch up because we're not the only school district with a tremendous failure rate right now. Absolutely. And just know the whole community supports you, um, Principal Smathers. Um, and I, I'm not shy to say this. I've always loved the fact that you wear your heart on your sleeve as a for, for young people. And you. you are passionate about young people and seeing young people succeed. So thank you for always being that person and stepping up. And for you, um, Saray, let me ask you this. Listening to what is being offered for the summer for young people and, have, and, and even though you and Principal Smathers are, you know, um, and, and you know, he's a principal of um, Groveport in your Westland, you know, what would, what advice would you give a young person who has disengaged over the year? That it's going to be a struggle, but once you get back on the road, you're just going to feel accomplished that you did. Yes, thank you. And so, right, I'm excited for your future. So when you graduate from college, what's the next step? I am still unsure about that, but I would like to like have a job in business. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Saray, and thank you so much and congratulations to you. And um, Principal Smathers, is there, if, if parents wanna get in contact with you in, in the program, do they, how do they get in contact? So we've been sending out links to okay. all of our parents and our students through email. We have a uh, mass communication that we send out, it's called Blackboard. Uh, they're getting those. It's on Facebook. It's on our website. Uh, we have a QR, o, a QR code that kids can scan and upload and start uh, filling out the application. They need to register for summer school through our final forms application, as okay. well as download the link to Franklin County Jobs and Family Services and get registered there also. We have staff 
all day working with families, helping them manipulate and manage this whole thing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much and thank you, Saray. And if everyone want to come back up, I'm going to I'm going to do a brief commercial as we close out. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. I really want to thank our young people. Thank you so much for being bold. Thank you for sharing your experiences. Thank you so much for participating in what is being offered in your community. On behalf of the Franklin County Commissioners, Commissioner Kevin Boyce, Commissioner John O'Grady, and Commissioner Don Tyler Lee, you know, investing in young people and in our summer youth programs and the investments, we don't look at it just as investments. We look at it as generational impact because we believe that what we invest in kids today will impact them later because you cannot be what you cannot see. And we need to make these investments. And as one provider heard say, let's try to invest more. So let's ask the community to step up even more for our young people. Um, I know I'm supposed to give some type of website and here it is. So for our families and community that's out there listening and watching, if you want to learn more about what is being offered in Franklin County for our young people, please go to jfs.franklincountyohio.gov backslash summer. Um, and you can find out so many more opportunities that were not even represented today. But thank you everyone. And we hope to be connecting with you all soon. My name is Joy Bivens, and I am the Director of um, Job and Family Services, as well as um, the De Deputy Director of Health and Human Services for Franklin County, and we hope that we can always be a resource to the community.